Greetings, friends, and my name is John Gabriel. This is the New Calculus Channel. So today, I'd like to discuss an article which I wrote uh, a long time ago and was on LinkedIn. But uh, as I'm no longer on LinkedIn, I want to bring your attention to this, to the contents of this article. And it's about the challenges that mainstream academics face when they rely on their confirmation biases. And uh, without further ado, let's begin. So you see that little happy academic there with two plus two equals five in the background. Well, we're not gonna focus on that. But <clears throat> in any case, and we're also not gonna focus on my hatred for the attributes of mainstream mathematics academics. I don't hate them as people. I hate what they are and what they do. Okay. So they're incorrigibly stupid, ignorant, incompetent, arrogant, dishonest, and jealous. And these are all traits I cannot tolerate. So <clears throat> one thing about mainstream academics is that they don't even understand their very own theory. And many of them have different versions as to what all these things mean. So I will place a link to this article in the details section of the video. Uh, just follow along with me for the time being. So <clears throat> the dead academic called Euler or Leonhard Euler actually uh, made the definition S is equal to lim S. And I want to show you that that definition actually found its way also into Rudin's popular Principles of Mathematical Analysis book. So this is the typical textbook that one will use as part of a real analysis course in mathematics. It can be taken either in the first or the second year. So on page 59 or page 68 of the PDF, we have, and it says, you're looking at this particular symbol here, it says, we call for, which is this expression here, an infinite series or just a series, okay? The numbers S sub N are called the partial sums of the series, okay? So uh, if S sub N conver converges to S, we say that the series converges and write that S is the sum of the series, but, but, notice carefully, it's, it should be clearly understood that S is the limit of a sequence of sums and is not obtained simply by addition. So what does that little part of the book say? Okay, let's see what it says. So it says that a series is just simply a partial sum. There is no such thing as an infinite series, okay? So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 plus dot 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 is not an infinite series, but a partial sum followed by plus and the ellipsis plus and the ellipsis, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so all you ever have is a partial sum followed by the ellipsis. Now, the value 0 0.333 is considered to be equal to this infinite sum. In other words, you can't have 0 0.333 dot 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 unless you interpret it as being an infinite sum, right? And that's why he said infinite series, okay? Series comes from a Greek word, series, okay? And it means sum. Now, next, a sequence is obtained from a series, okay? And so how do we obtain the S sub Ns? Well, that's very simple. So if we have this series here, the S sub Ns are simply the sum of the terms. So S sub 1 is 0 0.3. S sub 2 is the addition of these two, which is 0 0.33. S sub 3 is the addition of all the first three, which is that, and so on, okay? So, to find the terms of the sequence, we use this lovely little formula here, which is just simply derived from that of a geometric series. In other words, a convergent geometric series with a ratio uh, between minus 1 and 1. Mm. So, <clears throat> now in analysis... We consider what happens as the number of terms in any partial sum increases 
or decreases indefinitely, but there's nothing about infinity there. So in other words, we, we, we try to figure out what happens is n becomes very big or m becomes very small, right? In this case here, we're more concerned what happens is m becomes very big. So we know that we could rewrite this expression like this, right? As you see over here. So obviously, just looking at this side here, if m becomes very big, what happens to this fraction? It starts to become very small, right? In other words, decreases indefinitely. So it becomes very small, but never zero, okay? So this fraction here cannot be zero. Now, to reason as Euler reasoned, that one divided by infinity, which is totally uh, meaningless because infinity is not a number. It's not actually one divided by infinity, by the way. There's no division taking place. It's one over infinity, just as one over three doesn't mean one divided by three. It means uh, the number one third. Okay, so we say one over three, but the division has taken place. In, and in algebra, uh, nothing happens when you say one divided by three because the division algorithm pertains only when the numerator is greater than the denominator, okay? And the stopping condition is when the remainder is less than the divisor. So to reason that, first of all, something that doesn't exist is really simply nothing as Euler did, is, is to reason like an idiot, okay? So because look, in order for any ratio, and this ratio in particular that you see here, to become zero, there must exist an n, an n, such that zero is equal to this right hand side there is no such n okay so you can't put infinity there because infinity is not a number all right so now if this decreases indefinitely then the partial sum increases indefinitely to one third but never becomes one third okay so you can say that the sum to infinity of this expression here is one third because you can't plug infinity in there as a number all right there's no such thing. And infinity is a super task. It's nonsense. There's no such thing. So it's utterly insane to suggest a, a definition such as S lim S uh, in, U, in Euler's Elements of Algebra. And you'll see that there. And you can find that definition in German in this uh, first link, which I've got over here, S lim S, which says, Daher ist uns Bruch, therefore is our fraction 1 over 1 plus a, gleich dieser unendliche, unendlichen Reihe. And then it gives the expression, which is the series. Okay, so you can go there and look at that for yourself and see what happens. So, mainstream academics don't even know their own theory. And it's utterly insane to suggest a definition such as s is equal to lim s. But there are more reasons for that. So uh, another very important reason is that this uh, number one-third, this number one-third, because the vinculum doesn't mean divided. It, it's just part of the name of the number, okay? One over three is a name, right? And for the, so uh, for the same reason, also 0 0.9991 is, is equal to one is absolute nonsense. And what we really... Uh, need to know about this number one third is that it has no measure in base 10. Okay. And the reason for that is very simple. Um, in base to have a measure in base 10, all it all the prime factors of the denominator must be contained in 10 or, or whatever the base is. Okay, so yes, in base three, it's a finite representation, and that's fine. But it and it's a it's a proper measure because it's complete. But in base ten or any other base where three is not a factor, there is no measure. All you have is an approximation. Okay, and this article here, the link to this article explains the entire proof of that most important number theory. Number theorem. So. All this is usually taught in high school, and math educators just imagine that s is equal to, you know, a sum to infinity. In other words, they imagine an infinite sum is possible. Does that sound weird? Indeed it is, but that's really what they're doing. And there will be those who will retort, but Mr. Gabriel, what about Dirac and Katz, classes of equivalent convergence sequences, etc., etc.? The answer is that none of those are valid constructions. In fact, there isn't even such a thing as a real number line. 
there is a rational number line, but not a real number line. And moreover, uh, mainstream academics cannot seem to comprehend that the difference between a geometric uh, unit and an algebraic unit is vast. There's, there's, there's almost no direct comparison because you don't have a geometric unit, okay? And the unit in algebra is an abstract unit. Its size actually doesn't even matter. And I'll place another link to another article which explains what I've just told you now. It's called Discovery, a Personal Discovery of the Concept of Number. And you'll be enlightened and illuminated and all those good things. So I'll put a link to this article. I'm kind of running out of time, but I explain also why it's a very bad idea to have a definition of S is equal to lim S. And just to finish off now, there is that uh, well-known news group called Sci.Math, and you'll be surprised at how many mainstream academics don't know these facts and how they confuse themselves and have a lot of hand-waving arguments. Uh, you know, there's very little difference between a mainstream academic who does that and an intellectually challenged person because you cannot reason with somebody who's intellectually challenged. And if you read those uh, debates and discussions, you'll see that these people are beyond reason. In other words, they simply cannot be convinced solely on the basis of fact, logic, and truth. What they believe in is exactly that, belief. It's not mathematics, it's belief. And the Church of Academia is a cult, okay? So, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, become a subscriber, click like, please, because I have many enemies who will uh, try to dismiss my uh, videos and my articles and they've tried many times to shut down my sites in fact they have six times already so become a subscriber spread the news and remember that whatever you read about me is not true unless I said it so there's a lot of libel out there okay don't fall for the libel you'll be missing out on incredible information that I'm sharing with you uh, if you haven't downloaded my free ebook on the new calculus, now's the time to do it. I encourage you to do it. Very well then, I'm tired and I'm out of breath, so I'll leave it at that. My name is John Gabriel and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, friends, goodbye.